In US, Pharaoh Olivetti lived a luxurious life with drinks and beautiful women. He is a young billionaire who lacks nothing in his life and is often seen enjoying luxury without much thought for others. He takes helicopters and lands on mountaintops to ski on deep snow. He drives luxury collectibles, does sports and dates women while piloting his own plane. As a normal rhythm begins to establish, Pharaoh walks into the building in a fancy suit and talks business with his assistant Lawrence. He called briefly with a rival and then ordered Lawrence to order 5,000 shares of the company which would cost $60 million. Teresa meeting waiting, but Pharaoh instructs Lawrence to take care of it because he was going to attend a pool party at the swimming pool. Next, he chats with a blonde and is joined by a friendly couple, Steve and Cassandra who praise Pharaoh as a pious man for not kissing his wife's hand. He gets a call from his mother telling him that his father is sick and he had asked his son. Pharaoh finds himself on a plane and his own voiceover quickly recounts his life. He was born in Italy, but moved to America and became a successful businessman. He mentions that his father is worried about one thing, that Pharaoh will not find true love because he is surrounded by money and women. Pharaoh arrives at his parents' house and meets his mother, who warns him that his father doesn't have much time left. Pharaoh then began to greet his father and bent down at his father's bedside to convey the last words. His father had one last request, he wants Pharaoh to go away for a month without money, and he should not use his name or power, Pharaoh tries to postpone the question, but seeing his father dying he can't say no anymore, so he agrees to her wish, after the funeral was over, Pharaoh said goodbye to his mother because he had to return to America, two weeks later, Pharaoh warned Lawrence that he would be absent for the next 30 years and asked Lawrence to replace him in office temporarily, he then swapped his driver's license with Claude's driver's license so that no one could identify him on his trip, an arrogant man named Curtis gave the flight attendant a lot of trouble, which made the flight attendant run out of patience, so Aya taught him a lesson by throwing throwing potatoes as many times as if he were a child because Curtis said the potatoes weren't tasty, which made everyone laugh. Pharaoh arrived in town with a bag in his hand and got a lift from a truck driver, while Curtis was picked up by Diane, his wife's assistant, but this time his attitude was the opposite of arrogant, very polite, Pharaoh tries to apply for a job at a local shop, but after looking at Pharaoh strangely, the shop owner denies giving him any work. That evening, Pharaoh reached a bar and started devouring the food that was there as snacks for the customers, basically free food. Seeing Pharaoh as a handsome man, the blonde woman sitting next to him was interested in Pharaoh and started talking to him, and Pharaoh introduced himself as Claude. The woman started asking him questions such as where he lived and what work he did. Pharaoh nervously answers the questions indirectly, which confuses and annoys the women and they immediately leave, but a fat brunette Pita takes her place, she's not that impressive but she's good enough, and Pharaoh says that he has no place to sleep tonight, so Pita invites him to her place, Pharaoh saw Diana sleep on the sofa, but Pita didn't explain who she was and sent Pharaoh straight to his bed. Soon Peter arrives in the sexiest lingerie and tries her best to persuade Pharaoh to enjoy beautiful moments together, but Pharaoh makes some excuses and they end up falling asleep, because Peter's snoring didn't make Pharaoh sleep, so he walked out and looked closer at Diane which made her wake up and called Peter who immediately threw him out of there. When Pharaoh was alone on the street, two thugs tried to rob him, so he punched them both and ran away. He manages to reach the fire escape while the thugs lose sight of him, but a woman calls the police because a stranger is peeping from outside her window. When Pharaoh was about to leave the location, the police grabbed him and took him to the office and immediately charged him with attempted robbery. After Pharaoh called Lawrence to buy the 50 million shares he had transferred, the police took him to a prison cell where he found a big criminal who immediately messed with him causing the two to get into a fight. However, the police saw this and immediately took the man to another cell to be transferred because he was too strong to handle. The next morning, Pharaoh woke up and asked if he could stay until breakfast. But the police didn't listen to a word he said and released him because last night's thugs were arrested and the story spread throughout the world. Pharaoh's hunger was getting the best of him, so he decided to go to the local shop and try to exchange 50 cents and a pack of rubber for the food he had, but this did not benefit him. Meanwhile, Diane is on her way home when she feels she is being followed and has a memory of how she was attacked by a scary man in the past. She reached the house and shouted for her mother while knocking on the door, and entered the house feeling safer. Her mother wanted to match her with someone because she wants her daughter to start dating again, but Diane denies that there is clearly something going on in her life that is why she is afraid to date. That evening, Pharaoh sat on a park bench where he met a crazy woman who told him to leave. Pharaoh spent the night sleeping in park bench, he only had 50 cents in his pocket and tried to get a hot dog it wasn't enough, but the cafeteria vendor gave him a free hot dog. Pharaoh tries to find a job at a newspaper, but he is hit by a truck driver who turns out to be Fred, an apprentice driver. Fred immediately apologized and helped him, and Pharaoh said that he was broke and needed a job, so Fred took him to the house of his boss who turned out to be Curtis. Curtis is arguing with his young wife Kate when Pharaoh walks further into the house, and Curtis asks him to sit down. Curtis offered him $600 a week to drive and he would stay with the family, while his wife looked at Pharaoh in despair when suddenly his spoiled daughter Nancy came and asked for $500 which he gave it as if it was nothing. Pharaoh takes the job and Curtis tells him to go get his references, but his wife asks him to hire Pharaoh for the night as bartender, so he got right to work. 
Pharaoh spends the evening serving guests who treat him badly, while Kate tries to flirt with him, he sees news about his company defeating a rival in a power takeover battle, and Curtis asks him to take a drunk man to his house. On the way, Pharaoh called Lawrence and told him to give a bonus of 5,000 to each of his company's employees for successfully defeating the plaintiff in court. When Pharaoh returned to his room, he found Kate waiting for him on the bed in a seductive pose, but Nancy knocked on the door and Pharaoh told Kate to hide under the bed. Nancy tries to seduce Pharaoh for fun, but Mr. Curtis knocks on the door, so Nancy hides in the bathroom. Curtis asks Pharaoh to sit next to him and when he tries to do something strange, Pharaoh says he might be suffering an infectious disease that made Curtis give up his plans. After Curtis leaves, a disbelieving Nancy tries to flirt once again and Pharaoh throws her out which makes Nancy very upset, but he takes Kate from under the bed. The next day, Pharaoh takes Curtis to his office where he sees Diane once again and greets her but she acts distant from him while the other employees are fascinated by his good looks. The next day, Diane found some flowers with a mysterious sender on her desk when suddenly Curtis called her from home and told her to take his bag which he had left at the office. Diane complains that she has to go to funeral, but Curtis doesn't want to hear about it. As soon as Diane arrived at Curtis' house to drop off the bags, Curtis told Pharaoh to take Diane wherever she wanted. On the way, Pharaoh continued to watch Diane in the rearview mirror and finally admitted that he had sent the flowers as an apology for the incident at Peta's house. Diane forgives him and they finally officially get to know each other, and Pharaoh wants to go with Diane to her relative's funeral like that's the best way they can have fun. The silly priest makes them laugh because he forgets the name of the dead person thereby making them connect with each other. After the funeral was over, they drank coffee together where Diane explains that this isn't a date but for some reason she feels comfortable being around him and opening up. She finds it hard to trust other people but she is able to talk to him, and Pharaoh finally finds out her husband was killed in the Iraq war, time passed, and Pharaoh took Diane back home, on the way, they make a few comments about Curtis family and Diane says that she's looking for another agent to get a job. When they arrived in front of the house, they stopped for a moment and kissed, while Diane's parents peeked out the window, this made both of them so happy that they made an appointment to meet again next Tuesday, and it would be a normal date. As soon as she entered the house, Diane's parents were not happy after finding out that the man she was dating was a regular driver, but Diane didn't care because she liked his person, not his job. A few days later, Diane's holiday was recalled and she had to work but that couldn't keep her away from Pharaoh, she goes with him and they check out some of the apartments Curtis assigned to the project. A few days pass, Nancy comes to her father's office and tells Curtis that Pharaoh went to her room to flirt. Curtis called Pharaoh and fired him, while Diane couldn't help herself seeing Pharaoh being insulted and said the inevitable words that shocked everyone. Diane finally resigns from her job and they leave the building together, and Pharaoh tells her what really happened at Curtis' house that night, Diana asks where he will live now, but thinks it doesn't matter because the Pharaoh gets paid, Diane then invites Pharaoh to an awkward dinner with her parents and Pharaoh eats ravenously, Diane's parents ask Pharaoh about his life, but they become disappointed when they realize that Pharaoh's future is not right and it gets worse when Pharaoh tells them that he was just fired today and also drags Diane down with him, Diane has to get them back in line, so she talks privately with her parents about being nicer to Pharaoh and returning to the dinner table. Pharaoh revealed that he might soon be leaving for California which did make his parents feel a little relieved. Once they leave, Diane's parents say that Pharaoh has manners, but it looks like he hasn't eaten for a month. Take a walk down the street and eat ice cream, Diane expressed her desire to live alone again rather than being with her parents, but that's another story, Diane talks to Peta and tells her that she is dating Pharaoh, while Pharaoh is collecting his things from Curtis' house where Kate slips him money as provisions and asks Pharaoh to contact her another time. The next day, Diane has an idea about opening a new agency with the money she saved in the last few years but only if Pharaoh becomes her partner. Pharaoh admires that she is willing to take risks and asks her to forget her old business tricks to offer a better business strategy which Diane happily accepts. They then went out for dinner to celebrate and drank some cocktails, love was in the air as they danced to romantic music. When they got back to the room, they started kissing, but Diana wouldn't go any further for some reason she couldn't talk about. Pharaoh convinces her that he is a person who can be trusted, so Diane begins to tell him about her husband who died. She wants to know what his last moments were like and if he said anything. She tries to call, and a man tells her that he was by her husband's side when he died, so Diane believes him and goes to see the man to hear his story. But that guy is a big liar attacked him, and he wasn't even punished for his crime, but he died a few months later of an overdose, Diane cries and Pharaoh comforts her, saying that everything will be okay. Some time later, Diane opened her new business and started making lots of profits, while sitting in the park. Pharaoh suggests that he might be leaving soon and Diane is worried that Pharaoh will have his own time, so she asks if they can open an agency in California, but Pharaoh is worried about his business here. Pharaoh then speaks on the phone with Lawrence who says that the Olivetti company is in danger because their rival has submitted a generous proposal to buy their shares. But there is still one way to win this game, namely Pharaoh just has to appear at the trial and regain control of his company. 